Today I want to talk to you about lying. So a couple months ago I came into our room, bedroom, and uh, Troy was scurrying around looking for something. I said, what's the matter? She said, I can't find my box and the UPS return label. Well, I was real quiet. I didn't say anything. A minute later, you would have found me down in the garage going through the recycle. You see, you got to understand something. So Tori does most of her shopping online, and clothes don't always work online, and so she, you know, sends a lot back. And um, and I'm a, I can't stand messes, so I'm a cleaner upper, and uh, often I get ahead of the rest of our family before they're ready for the, you know, throw stuff out, and. Uh, so I I found it the box and the and the return label, and so I came back up uh, and said, "Hey, honey, I'm so sorry. I threw it out. I thought you were done with it." And uh, why, when we do something wrong, do we want to keep quiet about it and deny it or lie about it? Uh, it was a dream of a lifetime for George O'Leary a chance to coach the premier football team in Notre Dame Fighting Irish. But the dream soon became a nightmare. The day he signed the contract, uh, Notre Dame released to the press his resume. And on it were some inaccuracies about some of his letters uh, he'd, he'd, he'd achieved in college and uh, some of his uh, transcript in college. Uh, a few days later, O'Leary resigned in disgrace for long ago lies he'd given. I mean, it's an example of the epidemic of lying we find today. Uh, in recent years, politicians and pundits, professors, even Pulitzer Prize winners have been caught dealing in deceit. One of our most respected historians, Stephen Ambrose, plagiarized parts of another historian's work. Historian Joseph Ellis, who won the Pulitzer Prize for his book, Founding Brothers, was caught inventing a Vietnam War record for himself. Same thing happened to Tim Johnson, manager of the Toronto Blue Jays. Gloria Steinem's claim about the number of women who die each year uh, from eating disorders, uh, she claimed 150,000 a year, turned out to be a huge feminist hoax. Uh, James Patterson and Peter Kim in their book, The Day America Told the Truth, uh, said that 91% of Americans regularly embroider the truth. And my guess is the other 9% are lying. Why has lying become so prevalent? I mean, when we do something wrong, the typical response is to deny it or blame somebody else or to rationalize it and say, you know, it really wasn't that big a deal. Now add to that uh, the onset of postmodernism Postmodernists teach that truth is not simply irrelevant, it doesn't exist. So Lynn Cheney in her book, Telling the Truth, uh, writes, Academics leaped from the common sense observation that people and descriptions of reality differ to the conclusion that there is no independent reality and thus no basis for making judgments about truth or falsity. Now this has happened with all ten of the Ten Commandments. Uh, people, many, most people no longer believe it's always wrong to tell a lie or it's always wrong to steal or it's always wrong to commit adultery. George Barner, religious pollster, says only 34% of Americans still believe in moral absolutes. They still believe the Ten Commandments are God's design for all humanity of what's right and wrong. Now maybe you're not a Christ follower. You're not sure Jesus is the Son of God, was raised from the dead. You're not sure you believe lying is wrong in the Ten Commandments. But stay with me as I try to show you the Ninth Commandment, you shall not give false testimony against your neighbor, is true for all of us, 
Whether or not we believe in God, whether or not we believe the Ten Commandments. This is the ninth in our series of messages, the original top ten. We come today to Exodus 20, 16. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. Uh, God says telling the truth is the way to go. Now, why do we have such a hard time telling the truth? Uh, why are we so prone to deny or lie? Uh, why should we want to tell the truth? Well, a couple of reasons. One, lying cuts us off from God. One of the best examples uh, in the uh, Bible of uh, how lying cuts us off from God is in the uh, book of Acts, chapter 5. Now, a man named Ananias, together with his wife Sapphira, also sold a piece of property. Now, you have to understand, this is the story of the early church. Jesus has risen from the dead, ascended to heaven, and thousands of people have committed their lives to Christ. Uh, most of those were Jewish people. Now, Jewish uh, people ruled the government and the economy in Jerusalem and the surrounding areas, and so they made it very hard for people that had switched over to become Christians to get jobs or to keep their jobs. So a lot of people in the early church were in deep trouble. So those who had means sold property or other uh, things or just gave gifts to meet the needs of the poor. Well, Ananias and Sapphira saw all of this happening and, and the, the thanks and the praise that, that people received. And so they said, well, why don't we sell a piece of property? So they sold their property. Let me read this. With his wife's full knowledge, he kept back part of the money for himself, but brought the rest and put it at the apostles' feet. Then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept for yourself some of the money you received for the land? Didn't it belong to you before it was sold? After it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? You have not lied just to human beings, but to God. Now their lie was not that they sold their property and kept back some of it for themselves and just gave the rest. They didn't have to give it all. I mean, it was their property. They didn't have to give a, 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 any of it. And when they sold it, they didn't have to give all the money. The lie was that they sold it and kept back part of the money, but they made it like they were giving it all. When Ananias heard this, he fell down and died. And great fear seized all who heard what had happened. Then some young men came forward, wrapped up his body, and carried him out and buried him. About three hours later, his wife, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. So she didn't know her husband had died. Peter asked her, tell me, is this the price you and Ananias got for the land? So this is what her husband brought in and said, this is the whole price for the land. And she says, yeah, that's the whole price for the land. Peter asked her, tell me. Uh, yes, she said, that's the price. Peter said to her, how could you conspire to test the spirit of the Lord? Listen. The feet of the men who buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out also. At that moment, she fell down at his feet and died. Then the young men came in, finding her dead, carried her out, and buried her beside her husband. Great fear seized the whole church in all who heard about these events. We find that lying is serious business with God. Now let's update the story. Let's suppose we decide to build a new youth house. We tear down the old one and, and Chuck Hayward draws us up some plans. What it's going to cost? It's going to cost $1.4 million. Chris Quinn has expensive tastes. He wants to put in a whole gym. And we think, well, how are we going to raise that kind of money? Well, then somebody stands up on one side of the room and says, hey, I got a piece of property I'll, I, I'd be happy to sell. I'm sure it'll get at least 100000 Somebody else says, you know, I have three rental properties. I don't need three. I, I, I can sell one and give to you. I'm sure I'll get uh, at least 300000 for the house. Uh, a woman stands up and says, you know, I got all this jewelry. I don't even wear half of it. I'll give you part of it. I'm sure it'll net $15,000. Somebody else stands up and says, you know, I've had a good year. Stock is appreciated greatly, and uh, I'll give you some appreciated stock. And you're sitting here, you're thinking, man, all these people doing that and everybody's thanking them and overjoyed, that'd feel good to me. So I'll tell you what, I've got this nice uh, luxury car. 
uh, I could I could draw I could drive a lesser model so I'll sell it I'll buy a, a more modest car and I'll give the difference and so you sell it but then you decide to keep back some of the money for yourself and you come and and give the remainder and the day comes and you bring it up here to me thinking I'm going to give you a huge smile and hug and instead I have a look of horror on my face and I say how could you lie to God and to us this way and you fall over and die don't you wish I had that power I mean, this illustrates the importance of the ninth commandment. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. This is the language command. This calls for truthfulness in communication. Uh, this is the foundation of science. We have to believe that scientists will give us accurate reports on their data. That they're not angling toward a, a predetermined uh, 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 hypothesis that they're trying to prove. Oh, this is the media command. We have to know that our media are accurately reporting the news and not editing it to reach their viewpoint, which is precisely the problem we have today. The vast majority of Americans no longer believe the media. God takes lying seriously. This is no surprise. It's contrary to his essence. In Proverbs 6, 16 to 19, we read, why don't you read this with me? There are six things the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked schemes, feet that are quick to rush into evil, a false witness who pours out lies, and a person who stirs up conflict in the community. He mentioned the seven things that the Lord hates. Two of them have to do with lying, telling the truth. When we lie, rather than becoming like, more like God, we become more like the devil. Jesus says, talking to some people, well, read this with me. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Those are strong words. Telling the truth is the way to go. Another reason telling the truth is the way to go is lying alienates us from people. Apostle Paul writes therefore each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor for we are all members of one body when we lie to each other we alienate ourselves from other people King David made a policy decision not to allow any liars in his administration he said no one who practices deceit will dwell in my house no one who speaks falsely will stand in my presence. He did not tolerate lying. This is a good business decision. You cannot work with people you cannot trust to tell you the truth. And it's a good policy for marriages. You have to tell the truth to your mate. One pastor's wife had trouble being forthright with her husband. They were in the bedroom and she walked into her walk-in closet and he followed her in there and he found a carton of eggs. There were six eggs in it. And then there was a stack of 1,000, or yeah, a, 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 a thousand one dollar bills. And he says, what's this? And she says, every time you give a bad sermon, I put an egg in the carton. He thought, well, I've been preaching for a lifetime, only six bad sermons, not bad. He says, what are the dollar bills? She says, every time I get 12, I sell it for a dollar. <laughs> so whether you're at work or at school or with your family, telling the truth is the way to go. Well, what's the cure for lying? Let me suggest three things. One, recognize vi lying violates our basic design. God enforces this command the same way he enforces all the commands. Through the law of consequences. 
Apostle Paul says, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. If you lie regularly, you will suffer the consequences. It's guaranteed. You'll lose all your friends. Once people realize that you don't tell the truth, you exaggerate, you say things that aren't true, they'll drop you. You can't have, have a friendship with someone that, doesn't, that lies to you. I know one guy who was very popular in high school. He was good looking. He was funny. He was the life of the party. He was a great athlete, very fast runner, great football player. But he had one problem. He didn't tell the truth. You know, he'd say he'd meet you somewhere and he wouldn't meet you. He'd say he'd do something, but he wouldn't do it. He'd say he'd pay you back, but he wouldn't. He'd say, I'll deal with my drinking problem, but he didn't. And eventually, he lost all his friends. So he went from a very popular high schooler to an adult with no friends. You see, we don't really break the law. The law breaks us. The law is the measuring rod. It describes our basic design, God's design for all humanity. The Ten Commandments describe the way we were meant to function best. We were meant to worship God, not some cheap substitute, not idols. We were meant to live in continuity with our past by honoring our parents. We were meant to uh, find a balance between work and rest. We were designed to be monogamous and to tell the truth. When you don't live this way, you suffer the consequences of breaking your basic design. You're miserable. Even if you claim ignorance, the law will break you. Suppose you say, I didn't know uh, I wasn't supposed to bear false testimony against my neighbor. I didn't know it was wrong to lie. That's no protection. Even though you uh, don't know about the law, you will suffer the consequences of breaking it. You'll still lose all your friends. Ignorance provides no protection. Suppose I don't know the law of gravity. I missed class, uh, physics class, the day that was discussed. So I step off the, the 110th floor of the Sears building in Chicago. I say, hey, I'm doing great. I'm flying. You know the old joke. The guy flies by the 60th floor says, so far so good. Even though you don't know the law, the, about the law of gravity, you're subject to it. This is why we must teach our children the Ten Commandments. We have a whole generation growing up who've never been taught the Ten Commandments. But ignorance will not protect them. They will still suffer the consequences of breaking God's grand design. Parents, don't let your child get away with lying. If your child tells a lie at home or at school, don't laugh it off and say, isn't that funny? It's not funny. Teach your child that, you know, if you do this, you will lose all your friends. You can lose your job. This summer, Jamie, our 19-year-old, went to a party in Michigan uh, where there was drinking. And the next day, People accused her of, of drinking. Uh, we, our, our beach house there is in a Christian community, and there's wonderful things that go with a Christian community, but also people can be pretty judgmental. And so it became a, a big deal. And, uh, but we knew J Jamie didn't drink. Uh, she, uh, every night she'd get home, she'd come in and, and uh, talk to us. And uh, um, so I, I, Jamie and I went for a walk the next day, and we kind of have a walk. It's about three miles round trip, and then it ends with going up this, you know, steep uh, sand dune, kind of like Cape Kowanda in Pacific City. And I said to Jamie, I said, you know, um, the most important relationship for you to foster is with, with mom and me. We have to know, you have to tell us the truth. Always tell us the truth. And that builds a relationship of trust. So if you tell us you weren't drinking, 
we can say to other people, she wasn't drinking, sorry. And based on our integrity, we can actually help you out with, with situations like this. Telling the truth is the way to go. Another cure for lying is enjoy the rewards of telling the truth. Uh, most of the commandments are stated in the negative. We don't really like the Ten Commandments. They say what we shouldn't do. But each commandment also has a grand positive. You can't fulfill the Ten Commandments just by avoiding what is wrong. You also have to do what is right. That's what Jesus does with all the commandments in the New Testament. He simplifies them and states them as a grand positive. So in Matthew 5, he says, all you need to say is simply yes or no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. He says, be so truthful that people will know when you say yes, you mean that. When you say no, you mean no. When people know that we can always be trusted to say what we mean, you'll be rewarded many times over. Years ago, before everyone booked their airline tickets online, uh, you'd call up the airlines and say, I, I need to fly. And you'd get a ticket that way. And uh, so one uh, ticket agent uh, worked for a major airline for 20 years. But toward the end of her career, she nearly lost her job three times for being too honest. I mean, she'd talk to a, a customer and and they'd want a flight at a certain time and their, their airline didn't have one, so she would suggest another airline that had that flight that they wanted. One time, and you know, and, and airlines would monitor their sales agents, you know, by monitoring their phone calls, and so that's how they learned about this. And one time she uh, suggested that they fly another airline that could say, save huge money. She would have lost her job, except that customers emailed the airlines and sent letters commending this agent for her unbelievable honesty. One person said, you know, I fly a lot, and I have never had an agent suggest another airline unless I insisted. Uh, and I want you to know, because of this agent, you are now my exclusive airline. Uh, telling the truth brings its own reward. You feel in line with God, you feel good about yourself, and people will love you for it. Parents, reward your children for telling the truth. Make it a big deal. Teach them that lying or denying or covering up a lie is always worse. In the world of government, we always find a cover-up is worse than the crime. When I threw out Jory's uh, box and receipt, if I had just recovered it and then just kind of come up to the bedroom and just kind of slipped it into the bedroom, that would have been far worse. Instead, I said, you know, honey, I'm sorry for wasting your time and the time you had to take looking for this, and uh, I, I just didn't know you still needed that. Telling the truth is the way to go. There's a third cure for lying. Turn to Christ and lean into him. This is so important, and this is important with every one of the commandments. Face it. We all, I don't think it's just me, when we do something wrong and we're caught, our immediate reaction is to deny it or lie about it or cover it up. Aren't you like me? So what should we do? Lean into Christ. I begin every day with uh, what I call chair time. I've, I've talked to you about this before. I sit in my favorite chair in our house and I read the Bible. I take our journal and do two or three questions in here. And then I pray through my day. And often, somewhere in the prayer, it goes something like this. God guide me today. On my own, I make stupid mistakes. I say foolish things. 
I know when I'm caught doing something wrong, my first reaction is to deny it, to cover it up, to lie about it. I don't want to do that. So would you help me today through this day? And then I, I go about my day and I try to listen for the promptings of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit speaks to me many times each day. If I listen, and if I do something wrong and I'm caught, and my first reaction is to, Holy Spirit will say, don't do that. Or if I have lied, the Holy Spirit will prompt me and say, you know, clear that up. And say, you know what I just said to you was not right, and I'm sorry. And then I, I try to live my, my life through that day. You see, the Christian life is not about learning God's commands and then trying harder to keep them. It's about confessing our sins quicker, leaning into Christ's strength faster, admitting our weaknesses sooner, and then depending on the Holy Spirit for wisdom and strength throughout the day. Telling the truth is the way to go. But we need Jesus, the truth teller, to help us to do so. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for these Ten Commandments. They describe our basic design, how life functions best. And when we violate them, we, things do not go well. And so we confess today that we tend to lie, to cover up, to deny. Forgive us. Help us to tell the truth. Help us to experience the reward of telling the truth this week and to do that all week long. I want to give you a moment to talk to God. Tell him what you've heard today. Maybe you want to confess that you're like me. You're pretty quick to cover up. Confess that. Maybe there's something that's on your plate right now that you've lied about and you need to come clean with him or somebody else. Tell him you'll do that. If you've never given your life to Christ, this would be a great time to do it. Just say, I, I believe in you, Jesus, that you died for me and rose again. I want you in my life. Help me to tell the truth. You pray right now. Thank you for this command, Lord God. Uh, help us to keep it. We will break it. Help us to confess quickly when we do and get back on the path of following you. In Jesus' name, amen.